and greetings friends. Today I want to talk to you about an argument that uh, Trinitarians use against people who believe in the duality of the Godhead, what the Bible says of the Father and the Son, what scholars call today binitarianism. They argue that when you go back to Genesis, the first chapter, verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God. Now that word God is Elohim with a plural ending, and it's just left as more than one. And they argue that if God was dual, then he wouldn't have used the word Elohim, he would have used the word Elohim, as you read here in the Gensenius Grammar Book, page 244, Elohim meaning objects that naturally occur in pairs. So if God was dual, then it should read, in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. But instead, instead it says Elohim, meaning more than one, and therefore God is a trinity. Is this argument valid? Well, obviously these people just don't understand what is the very purpose of human life. There's a reason why Almighty God left it Elohim and not Elohim. Now he left it Elohim, meaning more than one, so that can mean 2, 4, 10, 15, whatever. He left it Elohim because Almighty God is expanding His family. That currently, Elohim is Father and Son. But eventually, it'll be the God family will consist of multiple hundreds of billions of divine beings that will be the same kind as the Father and the Son. That Almighty God is reproducing Himself through man. And we see this in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26. Notice it says here, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So what God created here was a physical clay model, a prototype of what will eventually happen to man, that man will be resurrected and will be the same kind as the Father and the Son. Now notice the context here of Genesis 1.26, the previous verses show here, verse 21, that God created the great whales after their kind, uh, every, uh, every winged fowl after his kind, verse 24, every living creature after his kind, the creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, verse 25, God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Notice the context. And then it says, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. In other words, let us make man after our kind, the God kind. And so this is the purpose of human life, that God is expanding his family. Eventually, Almighty God, Almighty God is going to change man from flesh to spirit, and that man is going to be born again into the very family of God and become the same kind as the Father and the Son. I'll show you some scriptures. In 1 John 3, verse 2, it says this, Beloved, now are we the children of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That word like in the Greek is likeness. We're going to have the same likeness as God. For we shall see him as he is. Here's another scripture, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 18. It says, But we all, with an open face beholding, as in a glass or a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are we changed? The Bible talks about a change, uh, talking about the resurrection, that we shall be changed from flesh to spirit, from human to divine. And you can read that, 1 Corinthians the whole chapter, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We are changed into the same glory, image, rather, into the same image from glory to glory, even, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we are going to, change, going to be changed from one glory to another glory, and that is the glory of the Lord. And you can read that in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And I'll read to you Psalms. The 17th chapter, verse 15. Notice what it says here. Psalm 17, 15. It says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake, talking about the resurrection, when I awake with thy likeness. So when we are resurrected, we are going to be, we are going to be like 
God, the same likeness and image as God Almighty. And you can also read that in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 5, when it talks about we sh that we are planted in the likeness of his death, and we also shall arise in the likeness of his resurrection. So we are going to be the same kind as the Father and the Son, the same image and likeness as God Almighty. So this is why God left it as Elohim, because he ex he's going to expand his family to multiple hundreds of billions of divine beings. And if he left it as Elohim, well, that would limit God to just two divine beings, the Father and the Son, but God doesn't want to do that. He wants to expand his family. And even with the Trinity, three is the number of finality. And that would also limit God to just three beings, but God doesn't want to do that. It's Elohim, because it's Father and the Son at the moment, but then at the resurrection, when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, immersed in the Holy Spirit, we will be raised with the same image and likeness as Almighty God. Almighty God is reproducing himself through man. And this is why he left it as Elohim and not Elohim. So to argue in this way is just another Bible misconception.